Welcome to Paris. Crystal, aka Points Diva. I am all about traveling on points and miles versus using my own money. Why use your own money if you really don't have to? So over the New Year's holiday, Mr. O and I had an extended layover in Paris, France. And we basically tried to do as much as we could, see all of the major attractions within 24 hours. Um, if you're in Paris for more than two days, then you should definitely invest in the museum pass because it'll allow access to all of the sites that you'll see in this video and allow for you to travel on the metro within the city. If you are in Paris for less than a day, so basically 24 hours, don't invest in the museum pass. Just purchase a transportation card for the day and basically you can get through the whole city. And that's what we did. So take a look at all of the top things to do and see in Paris if you have a short time frame. Flew from Johannesburg, South Africa to Paris on Qatar Airways. Our Doha to Paris leg was in the famous Q Suites. I'll post a detailed video of the Qatar Q Suites in a later video because this flight was dope. We used 55,000 American airline miles and paid $44 in taxes. I know, not bad. They offered pajamas, top-notch dinner service, there was plenty of room in the suite to work, and the food was bomb. With one credit card sign up, you can experience this flight. For hotel, we booked the Hotel Indigo, an IHG property for 55,000 points per night. We were upgraded to a suite and it was spacious and comfortable. This boutique hotel was small but centrally located in the Opera District. You should always stay in a central location like the Notre Dame or Vendôme to be close to the action. Thankfully, there are a bunch of good hotel options where you can redeem hotel loyalty points. I'll detail hotel options in my Points Diva blog. First on your list should be the Louvre. This is the world's largest museum. It used to be the palace for the French kings until Louis XIV wanted a bigger spot and built the Palace of Versailles. This museum is massive. If you are only in Paris for one day, don't bother going inside. You can spend a full day here. Just take a few photos outside and roll out. If you do decide to go inside to see the famous Mona Lisa, go closer to closing time so you can get a shot like this. Once you're done here, next is a 15 minute walk to the Saint Chapelle. The Saint Chapelle Holy Chapel is a hidden gem in Paris that can easily be overlooked with its Gothic architecture and 800 year old wear and tear. The entrance fee is around $13 and to save time, purchase tickets online to skip the lines. This chapel was built to house Louis IX's collection of relics of Christ, which included the crown of thorns. The downstairs explains the restoration of this place. Upstairs is the main attraction. So we are currently in St. Chapelle. This place is one of my favorite hidden gems in Paris. It's really close to the Notre Dame. It's walking distance actually. But let's just kind of take a walk and look at some of the detail in all of these things. So pretty. What makes this place so magical is that the stained glass windows tell the story of the Old Testament. And you really just have to take a look and sit back and really truly see the old stories. And what makes this place even better is that right now it's really dark and gloomy outside. So just imagine if you come here and it's sunlight. I mean, it's just magical. The elevated throne was built for the crown of thorns that was placed on the head of Jesus during the events leading up to his crucifixion. Yes, Louis IX 
purchased the crown of thorns worn by Jesus himself to have it displayed at this church. Next is another short walk to the Notre Dame. If you are unable to walk, use your Metro Pass and take the train. Your visit to Paris is not complete until you visit the Notre Dame. The Notre Dame is one of the most popular churches worldwide. Currently, you are not able to visit or even get close to the Notre Dame right now because of the fire that happened, was it a year ago? I think it might have even been a year ago. So we're pretty much like a block away, but you have to even still visit and do a little bit of research because the exterior of the church has so much detail and history. It really, truly is amazing. Notre Dame. Maybe they'll allow visitors to get closer soon. Up close, there are some crazy visuals and stories behind them. This image I took back in 2017 of St. Dennis holding his head and another angel comforting him. Towards the right of the Notre Dame, you'll see the famous Shakespeare bookstore. If you see the bookstore, then you have entered into the Latin Quarters. The Latin Quarters has student-filled cafes and fondue restaurants. It was lunch, so it was time to have some fondue to warm us up. So I'm looking for a really good fondue place. We're currently in the Latin Quarters and it's one of the oldest streets in Paris and they have really, really good fondue restaurants. So we found a really cute fondue place. I picked this because it had a lot of people inside. So I'm hoping that that's a great sign. It's Le Obrégé and I'm not gonna say the rest of the name because I butchered French in high school, I made like a C. But the prices are right on the outside. Um, you'll notice a little You notice a lot of the restaurants, especially in the tourist areas, they will have the prices on the outside so you won't get sticker shot. So we'll let you know how it is afterwards. We ordered a pot of fondue and mussels to share. This wasn't your melting pot type of a place with many different dipping options. They had ham, bread, and potatoes. The mussels had a great broth and was plenty for us to share. I would highly recommend this restaurant for a quick bite and reasonable prices for the area. At the time, there was a train strike, so public transportation was limited. We used our train pass and rode the bus to Rue Cremieux. This is a one block pedestrian street that has quaint pastel house fronts. This is where you'll get some dope gram shots. If you go here, just be mindful that people live here and not to get too close to the houses. Paris is best seen on foot. There's so many famous statues and monuments that you can easily discover by bike or foot. Contest time. If you can guess which American female superstar film this square and statue in her HBO documentary, I'll provide the first person who writes the correct answer in the comment section below a free global entry. If you have some time for shopping, Champs-Élysées is the place for all of your high-end shopping. So we are currently in the Arc de Triomphe area where they have some amazing shopping. So LV, Gucci, whatever you want. And if you spend over 125 euros, you get 12% tax back. Okay. The Arc de Triomphe, right behind you. The Arc de Triomphe is a monument that honors those who fought and died for France and the French Revolutionary. You can access the top of the panoramic terrace for 13 euros. We decided to take a taxi from here to head over to the Eiffel Tower. Let me just say, I advise against driving in Paris unless you're taking a day trip to the Champagne region. The Eiffel Tower is best seen at night when the lights are sparkling. You can purchase tickets online to visit the top and there is also a restaurant. The Sacré Cœur in Montmartre should either be your first or last stop. It is pretty remote from the other tourist attractions but can easily be accessed by public transportation. You'll walk up a million steps before reaching the top. Traveling is great. But staying in shape is needed. Making it all worth it. 
love it. Basilica of the Sacred Heart of Paris, commonly known as Sacre Coeur, is a Roman Catholic church built in 1875. They do have mass and confession here at different times of the day, so be respectful as you walk around taking pictures. This free attraction is worth a visit, even if you aren't Catholic or religious. This viewpoint is the highest in Paris and has amazing views. Map out walking directions to the Moulin Rouge. It's about a 20 minute walk away. You'll soon enter the red light district. It wouldn't be Europe if they didn't have a red light district. Most of the adult theaters, cabarets, and sex shops can be found along this boulevard. You'll then come up on the infamous Moulin Rouge. There will be lots of tourists here taking pictures or waiting to see a show. So at the end of all of my travel videos, I love to do an overall impression of the city or the country that we just visited. Um, but before I do that, a lot of people have been asking me who the man is behind the camera. So it is Mr. O, my husband. So he films and edits all of my videos. That's some love, y'all. A lot of love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, what's your favorite part about Paris? Because Paris is your favorite city, right? Paris is my favorite city. Uh, Paris just has a je ne sais quoi about it. When you're in the city, you just feel a little bit different. Uh, I like just sitting on a sidewalk cafe, grabbing a bottle of wine, and just people watching. Mm. It's my favorite thing to do. So, you fancy and you nosy. Just a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, overall, definitely visit Paris. It is an amazing amazing city it's definitely the city of love and fashion um, definitely try to go for more than 24 hours but if you go and you know you're only there for like a layover a couple of hours something like that watch the video save it subscribe hit the like button did I miss anything uh, turn on the bell notification so when we drop all of our other videos you guys will be notified right away Yes, and I will also um, do a separate video, as stated earlier, of the Qatar Q-Suites flight. So stay tuned for that. That was dope. It was. <laughs>